Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of this lecture series. In this lecture I will teach you on how to design your own on-grid solar power system. So let's get started. Solar power system part 3 of 5 on-grid system design and calculations. The on-grid set on -grid setup is mainly composed of a solar panel solar panel array and so solar panel array and an on-grid inverter I have mentioned previously that the on-grid system is the sim simplest of the three types of setups and we just need three steps to do this uh, step number one is the load analysis here we will just compute for your daily power consumption. Step number two would be the sizing of your solar PV panels or your solar array. And step number three, that would be the sizing of your on-grid inverter. So step one, load analysis. Uh, the goal here is to determine what your daily power consumption is this step is really quite simple just take your electric bill and check your monthly power consumption and just divide it by 30 days and that's it so for example um, uh, yeah for example if we have a monthly um, monthly consumption power consumption of 170 kilowatts we just need to divide it by 30 days then that's it our daily consumption is 5.67 kilowatt hours per day now it is really up to you which month of bill you will choose you may choose the month with the highest consumption or the one with the lowest or you can even take the average now, for example, if you have a um, 12, 12 monthly bills from January to December, you can average it down and divide it by 30 days, then you'll have the your average daily consumption. But, um... You should always remember that the higher computed daily power consumption is uh, the more solar panels that we will need and of course the uh, we might also need a higher inverter rating that we will yeah higher inverter rating and more solar panels the higher inverter rating than this all translates to a higher initial cost but eventually this will all um, pay you back so, step number two would be sizing of the solar PV panels now that we have calculated how much power we consume daily we also need to determine how much sun is your location getting or what we call sun peak hours the sun peak hours is the duration at which the intensity of sunlight is um, 1000 watts per square meter so the average sun peak hours is usually around four to five hours and that value varies as you move av move away from the equator um, there are also locations where they they have longer days and some will have longer nights so this piece of information you need to google yourself or you can you can use four hours or five hours if you just wanted to approximate so to compute for the required capacity of our solar panels we should Mm, divide the daily consumption by the sun peak hours and multiply this by 1.3 
So that's 5.67 kilowatt hours divided by 5 hours and times 1.3. Uh, the re our required PV power now or photovoltaic power power is 1.475 kilowatts or that's 1475 watts. Now um, we should size our solar PV array according to this one. So suppose we have a number, we have a number of solar panels in mind and one of these is this panel right here with a power rating of 380 watts. To compute how many of these, this type of solar panel you need to install. Um, We just need to divide the required the PV power by the by this panel's uh, power rating. So that would be one thousand four hundred seventy-five watts divided by three hundred eighty watts. So we have three point eighty-eight hour. We can just round it up to four. So we just we need sorry we need four pieces of this 380 watt panel next one is sizing the inverter step number three to size the the on-grid inverter we need to take the actual power output of our of our solar PV array the solar panel that we will be using has a power rating of 380 watts and we then multiply this by the quantity which is 4 so that's 380 380 watts times 4 we have a maximum PV power of 1520 watts this will be the output of our solar panel array next is we need to choose an inverter with a maximum power greater than the computed maximum PV power which is 1500 20 watts so yeah okay so in case we we've been shopping online and we found a number of uh, on-grid inverters in the market and one of them is this 2200 watt um, on-grid inverter so and this will this inverter would be quite sufficient for our um, requirement next step is um, we'll check if the other inverter parameters such as the voltage input and current input are enough with respect to our solar panel so suppose we will connect our solar panels in series yeah let's check its output voltage output voltage so pv out uh, for a series connection the voltages are additive so that means if we have so four solar panels the total voltage output of our solar PV array is around 195.2 vol vol volts DC. Um, looking at the right, uh, the maximum VDC input of our inverter is 400 volts, so um, our inverter can handle this. Um, this amount of 
voltage coming out of our uh, PV array or solar PV array. Next, we'll check the if the maximum input current is also enough. For a series connection, the current the current is the is the same. That means for solar panels connected in series with each having a short circuit current of 9.94 amps the current output of the solar array will will still be 9.94 amps um, this is still lower than the maximum input current of our inverter which is 10 amps so we are still okay in practice you would want to put put more buffer on this uh, say pick an inverter with a maximum input current input current of around 11 or 12 amps that should be that should be fine now that we have all the things that we needed let's build our on-grid solar power system the on-grid system is quite simple you have your solar pv array right here um, the solar pv panels or solar array converts the solar energy to electrical energy the solar array connects to the inverter this one which converts dc electrical energy to AC to be used by the appliances this your load the inverter is then connected to your switchboard this one which distributes power into the different appliances or load uh, the system is also connected to the grid this one your utility so as we have de determined in step one, the daily consumption is around 5.67 kilowatts per day. In step two, we have determined the number of solar panels required, and that is four. Each panel is rated at 380 watts, and for a total power output of 1,520 watts. The voltage output of each panel is 48.8 volts and uh, multiply that by 4 um, yeah because they are connected in series so we have a total voltage output of 195.2 volts the current the yeah the current is the current flowing through these panels is 9.94 amps so that will also be the charging current uh, no no not charging current the um, input current to our on-grid inver inverter in step 3 we have determined the rated power of the inverter by taking the maximum output of our solar PV array 1520 watts and and based on this we will choose an inverter with a with a sufficient power rating so in this example we chose 2200 watts a 2200 watt inverter um, next step we shall determine the circuit breaker ratings so for the DC circuit breaker right here um, that's at the output of our solar array we can take the current output of our of our solar array which is 9.94 amps multiply that by the number of solar array strings in this case this is just one string right here 
and multiply that with 1.25 for for the buffer the maximum rating of our DC circuit breaker should be around 12.4 to 5 amps and yeah since we don't have a this exact rating for the DC breaker we can settle with the next available value which is 14 ampere trip to pole DC circuit breaker next one we shall determine the um, AC circuit breaker at the output of our inverter right here so we can calculate this by taking the maximum power rating of our inverter which is 2200 watts and divide that by the grid voltage which is 220 220 watts uh, no 220 volt AC with this our minimum circuit breaker should be 10 amps if you can find a 10 amp uh, circuit breaker then go ahead uh, but for this example we chose the next available rating which is the 12 ampere trip to pull AC circuit breaker so that's all there is for the on-grid system system design and I hope you gain something from this I well just for an exercise I challenge you to do the same check your electric bill and design your own on-grid system from that and yeah have fun stay safe and see you in the next lecture um the next lectures the next lecture would uh would be about the upgrade system design and calculations so that's it goodbye thank you